Hello, so I'm going to do a quick video explaining what gear I'm taking to Windscale, C-Scale, Windscale, Sellafield. Basically, if you don't know, this is the site of Britain's worst nuclear disaster, and there's been a lot of dodgy stuff that's happened since with inappropriate dumping of nuclear waste, etc. So I'm very interested to see, you know, just on the day out, what sort of readings I get. So this is basically the video before I go, just explaining what I'm taking with me. So most importantly, the Radioscan 701A Geiger counter. I did a sort of brief review on this one the other day, but I'm really looking forward to testing the alpha window on the back of this when it's open uh, for, you know, seeing how sensitive it can pick stuff up. So that's going to be the primary Geiger counter I'm going to be using to search for things, the Radioscan 701A. I am, I've also reset the dose on that to zero because I want to see how much more of a radiation dose you get being in sort of C scale for a day than you would in most of the UK. I'm also going to have the GQ GMC 500 with me as well. Um, just because I'm quite interested in using that as well, because the idea is, if I've got a few lightweight Geiger counters, I want to take them just to see if the readings are similar or different across them, sort of thing. So I'm taking that. Um, I've also got two of these, although this one is the MGP DMC 2000S, but I'm also going to have one of those Sake sort of Model 20, whatever it's called, little decimeters with me as well. Um, but basically my dad will have one of these, I'll have one of these, we're going to try and reset both to zero, and the idea is that's just the personal alarm decimeter that lets you know about your dose. So I'll put it on my jacket pocket or whatever, or trouser pocket, just to see, you know, at the end of the day, out of curiosity, what I've personally been exposed to, I'm not using this for measuring directly. So it's not like these are going to be put on top of a sample. These are just going to be, each person has one on, and then at the end of the day, we can see what we've personally been exposed to, as opposed to Geiger counters, you know, taking readings on an object, what they're being exposed to. Right, this is the bulky one I have around my neck when I'm on the beach, the PDRM82D. The reason being, with the buzzer, it's pretty loud uh, ticking. So, for that reason, if I put it to max volume, there we go. Uh, if I'm walking along uh, and there's seagulls and the sea and a bit of wind, I should definitely still hear it if it starts ticking, you know, above background. And when it's at background, you pretty much get a reading of zero on there, but as soon as you get slightly above background, that you'll get at least a one at the very side of the screen. So um, that's a very easy way if I've got this around my neck with it chirping away. If it starts ticking faster and I look down, I know to start investigating more thoroughly with the more compact Geiger counters. But this one's interesting because, as said before, there's lots of shielding around the probe on it. You can't actually open that up. So it only really registers quite energetic gamma rays coming into it. You don't get any sort of beta or light or anything coming in to, you know, give you false readings. If this starts ticking away, you're being exposed to something pretty energetic and scary. So there's that. So that's all of the Geiger counters I'll be taking. And also in this sort of satchel bag I'll have around me, because obviously I have a load of stuff in the car as well if I need it. Uh, spare batteries. One of these this little half face masks. I've got more furry masks that I also take with me, but, you know, Corona's still a thing as well at the moment. So a load of batteries in there. I don't know how you can see that with the light. But basically a big bag full of spare charged batteries, just in case any of the batteries go in any of my bits. And lots of test tubes. The reason being, I am very interested in taking samples if I find a bit of sediment or sand that's ticking more than it should be. I want to put it in a tube and then do further study on it later on. So yeah, that's what I'll be taking to uh, Windscale slash Sellafield slash Seascale um, to see what I can find in terms of Britain's worst nuclear disaster site. Nowhere near the scale of Chernobyl, but still very interested if, you know, interesting if you're interested in like Geiger counters and radiation detectors and, you know, history of, um, you know, nuclear reactors and stuff like that. I'm not gonna bother taking an ionization chamber with me because they tend to be less sensitive than Geiger counters. And it's not like you're walking into, you know, um, something post a nuclear accident, sort of directly. This is more finding contaminants that have been left around from, you know, dodgy government, um, sort of, you know, cover up and uh, lack of funding, you know, stuff being done properly. Because, you know, you never bodge job, uh, bodge bodge job a uh, nuclear reactor and bodge job um, safely reprocessing of nuclear fuel, but in Britain we do, so um, yeah, should be quite an interesting day out, and if not, get me out in the sun a bit at the seaside, just contaminated seaside.